Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to some more Hard Space Shipbreaker. I'm just going to go over very quickly. I don't want to repeat myself, but I, I uh, off, uh, off recording, off camera, as it were, I was just musing that uh, apparently, uh, according to a lot of my commentors, you guys have said that the milestone system may have been patched in this, so it's no longer, well, not for all hulls, but maybe some of the larger later game hulls, instead of being three milestones for LT points, the game now has five, and the curve is kind of flattened a little bit, for lack of a better term. Uh, so it's a little bit more gentle, which would have less of an effect on people. That we, we raise the point that, you know, if you don't have time to spare, it is a video game, it is a toy. You know, there are a lot of adults that only have so much time in their day, um, you know, and nothing to the guys that can mainline this game for 12 hours a day. Hey, fill your boots. I'm glad that you've got the free time. But but for the most part, a lot of people raise concerns about not being able to save and on top of that, not being able to complete all the milestones. So it seems like they've already hot fixed it. They've already done a quick little patch to try and address it. So for better or for worse, we'll see how it all turns out. At least the devs are doing this sort of really quick, really reactionary responding to what I can only assume is it's beyond our channel. It's not like we're the voice of the bloody community or anything like that, but I'm sure that they're listening to all sources from all sides. So I'll give the, the, the devs absolute kudos and credit for, you know what I mean, actually reacting to their community. That's wonderful. Um, I also sort of, uh, I don't want to say walk it back, but we've been doing a lot of speculation freely about how the, um, the inability to save and the way that the, the, the milestones are structured could be disadvant disadvantageous. That's not a real word, I don't think, Scarlet. It would be um, not very uh, helpful if you couldn't play it for long stretches of time um, and you'd struggle to get to the final milestone. Now, people have pointed out that I dumpstered the thruster in a previous ship or I didn't even salvage the back end of it, and I comfortably, in two shifts got through two of the three milestones on a ship. So I'm pretty confident that with a little bit of brushing up, I'd be able to do all three milestones. Now, I don't have much gear. I'm hardly into the game. And I wouldn't say, even though I've played this a lot, I wouldn't say I'm a bloody, you know, esports legend at this game. So suffice to say, while I think there might, those concerns might still stand at higher difficulties about having time to play, it would seem that it, it doesn't actually take that long or that much skill to be able to do the whole buffalo or at least the interpretation of the three milestones within like a 30 minute session with two shifts. So a lot less unreasonable, a lot more reasonable. There you go. Don't use double negatives. A lot more reasonable than we uh, initially speculated on. And you know what? I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to be wrong about something like that. Absolutely. Because that just means the game's better for it. All right, let's repair this. I've got like 10,000 bloody repair kits. The game just keeps giving them to me. Can I buy any upgrades? No, wait, it'll be a different sort of yellow, won't it? Like, that means I can't afford it. Right. Anyway, I thought that's worth mentioning. That, you know, we might have a little bit longer intros on some of these videos, given that the, um, I wouldn't say the game's in pure flux, but it is on the back of a big update and it seems like they want to patch it a bit. So that's pretty cool. Um, maybe we do this Exolab thing as well. Get a bit more comfortable with it. And I'll try my very best to remember to, uh, to pull the thruster out the back. <laughs> it is interesting kind of having to re relearn it, as it were, from the beginning. Um, you know, they took away the bloody thrusters and now they've given them back and... Oh, goodness gracious. All right, we've got work to do, team. Now, they're not pressurizing hulls yet, as far as like, oh God. Ugh. Yeah, don't look at it, Scarlet. That'll, that'll lessen the impact. Nice one, mate. Doesn't this come off? Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Stifle a quick. Disadvantageous is a real world word. Oh, my live fact check is here to look after me. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> I was probably better off not knowing. Well, I would say that it's uh, it's not exactly common, you know, vernacular, common sort of parlance. It didn't feel comfortable rolling off my tongue, so we might we might just put that one on the bloody back burner, eh? Now, did that zap through all of them? Okay, yeah, we we had issues one time, but. 
can't say what they were. That's all right. It's done now. Yeah, that one thing's killing me. I know I just spend my points willy-nilly, like, who cares? But I tell you what, if I do remember, if I manage to remember, maybe people will remind me. Getting more tethers. Whew! I've become an absolute tether bloody hoe. I'm just slapping those things out left, right, and center, you know? And uh, I could absolutely do with an upgrade to them. Wow, okay, so the airlock's back here. Oh, goodness gracious me, Oshamoy. All right, well, this seems like as good a place to start as any. Let's do this. Now, people have pointed out, I was speculating, <laughs> but people actually pointed out that um, the, uh, the keys have been taken out of the game altogether. Which I think, I think is inspired because um, the only reason I chose not to use keys for fuel and all that isolation for the most part was because I enjoyed the challenge of trying to figure out the fuel line puzzles and all that sort of stuff. But beyond the, the memory, there was no real reason to do that. Okay, so this is interesting. So. We can use the handle release. Have they changed what it says? Manual override to extract a thruster with minimal risk of rupture. With minimal risk of rupture. Okay, so there's still a risk. Um, we can pull the face out of this though, potentially. I want to see what that's about because I've been, uh, you know, I've been sort of humming and hiring as to why exactly we can remove this sort of X-frame looking thing on the front. All right. Right, when there wasn't a thruster in there, you sort of found yourself asking the question, but why, bro? Why step bro? Alright, so that's processor. Right, so you can pull the whole thing out as, as that. That is pretty cool. So we'll just sort of send that down there. Okay, well that's one way to eliminate the risk entirely, right? I like it, I like it. That's pretty cool beans, man. Oh. Okay, it's not much of a warning. You're just telling me they're gone now. Down, down. Down, down. All right, we'll go get some more tethers. And speeding my little jetpack up, even just to make my trips to the tether bank. You know, less of a piss up, mess around. Now, oh no, so I was going to just drill that screen out. I know the screen has a, a minor amount of value to it. I feel like anyone actually comments about that is missing the big picture. Like, okay, yeah, cool. We get it. You like the window. Calm down, son. Can't see what now this this bulkhead's a bit much, but can't see why we can't. Oh, I like this. All these different doored sections in here. That's cool. Oh, wow, it's very busy, isn't it? But I can't see why we can't get her away with the diagonal cut again, you know? And splay. It's a good word, splay. I don't get to use it very often. So we're gonna splay this bloody ship wide open. I think we have to take off both of these just because of how this fastener works on the roof, maybe. Not a hundred percent on that one.
let's cut this corner off. This is good, that airlock is going to complicate things and all this cool equipment in here. This is, this is a cool ship, this is a cool hull and it's making my life painful. Which, uh, you know, I embrace. Alright, let's use the old bloody square head to push this out the road. Oh, here comes the music, holy heck. Now, given that I messed up the back end as well, people were speculating that um, I might still be able to do the old dunk the uh, hull maneuver, right? Oh, you know what? I could have left you on, couldn't I? Oops, instead I broke you. Oh no, I don't think that actually counted as breaking. So we'll, we'll tear these little wings off. I don't know what else to call them. I mean... But, uh, but we're going to stick this in the drink. Wait, what's going on? Why aren't you moving? Oh, because cause my tether didn't work. We're going to just dunk that straight in again. Oh, look at this. Thank you. Now what's this, furnace? Okay, what's the easiest way to cut you in half? Probably. All right. We can pull you off. Oh, there's a, there's a part here as well. Okay, I see. Alright. And then you'd want to cut this, so that might cut... Yeah, I thought it might. That's okay. That's alright. That's that, that's that. So I, I might be able to get away with cutting this without cutting the... I don't want to cut the floor, you know? Um, oh, bugger. Right. Right. Let's see if that does the job. Looks like it, eh? Hey. Well, look at that. That's like, that's interesting. Borderline exploitable, to be perfectly honest. Being able to burn out walls and have things still stay floating. I don't know if we'll do that. He likes to split the ship. I think it's a pretty valid uh, way of opening it up and... And sort of just giving you that greater access. It makes it pretty easy just to pull all this crap out, you know? What even is that? Fuck that off. It's almost like... Uh, you ever have those Lego sets that you can sort of just open up and almost like opening a book? 
and you can look inside it like a ca like a castle with all the knights and the drawbridge and that. That's basically it. Hard space Lego set. Hang on, hang on, look at this. There's like a centripetal component to this. That's kind of awesome, to be honest. Also, I'm never doing that again. Oh, thank goodness that's the whole console. Is that communications array and it doesn't want to let go? That's interesting. Ah. That's cool. Probably gonna worth a pretty penny, yeah. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. Fuck it, let's try it again. Salvage gain. Credit awarded. Warning. No tethers remaining. Just wait for them all to disconnect, shall we? Damn. He does it again. Good work, idiot. <laughs> At least none of them smashed. <laughs> That's right. It's a fine art and it needs to be uh, refined, I think. We're nearly there. Um, tethers. Fuck it, we're here, we'll get oxygen. No need to be stingy, boys. Put it on my tab. Time is winding down, Cutter. That was cool. Bit of a reverse bloody parking situation. That's a bit more sensible, isn't it? Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Salvage secured. Nice. Bit of be a. Uh bloody aisle 12 mop up the next one rank six. Oh, that was easy enough got some new upgrades got a new certification oh we might just stay with this one you know you're gonna start getting pressurized ships now good yeah great very exciting oh are you gonna hijack me and make me do that mission now okay yeah, okay, they're hijacking me. Bugger. Okay, that's fine. Hey, the tutorial needs to be done. It's just a shame that it takes 17 right, hours. You mean the insufferable one? Okay, yep, yeah, let's see what she has to say. Okay, hey, Rook. Time for the fun stuff. And 
but fun. I mean, incredibly dangerous. <laughs> there can be lots of pockets of pressurized space throughout a ship. It's best to scan ahead and see what's up. Activate your scanner and let's have a look. Your scanner will show you information about the interior of the ship, including whether a room is pressurized or not. Yeah. Red is unpressurized and green is pressurized. Right. Essentially, if you make a cut between the two spaces, you'll cause a violent decompression. Uh, the correct term is explosive decompression. <laughs> explosive, same deal. <laughs> okay, we don't want to crack into the ship and have it pop. When a ship is pressurized like this, best to go in through the airlock. Use the scanner to locate it. Yeah, all right. Activate the atmospheric regulator. All right. Yeah, all right. I get it. Let's go. I um, shouldn't do that for reference. Alright, good, good. Can I have my old ship back? Alright. Well, very good. Okay, we've got depressurized or pressurized hulls now. Oops, I forgot to grab on. My bad. Alright, well, let's make the most of this bad boy that they've given us, eh? What's pressurized? Why am I getting an alarm? We just depressure. You trying to tell me that that engine compartment's pressurized? Oh, maybe these side passages were technically sealed. Oh, hang on. Hmm. Okay. My bad. Some rookie shit going. Oh, now we've got bloody release valves. Very cool. That's not good. Side walls, you say? Sweet walls. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Would you like to stop that, please? There we go. Uh, meanwhile. Salvage deposit accepted. How much weight is this structure? Seven kilos. There is almost, it's almost inexcusable. There's almost no scenario not to just cut it out like this. Anyone who's sweating over bloody seven kilos of titanium needs to get their bloody head checked. this have internal couplings or is it still oh it might be it might be motherfucker all right so that's okay that's fine that's straightforward enough
I, I suppose if the titanium gets cut, who cares? We did an experiment people might have missed in previous episode, or it might have been the stream, that uh, the game will recognize it as changing mass, if nothing else. So that cut down the center won't actually change it. The, the total of the weight of that and that will be the same. It actually displaces the weight. Which is interesting because we've been sort of like, well, what do we do with that? How do we game that? And I guess it's exactly what I'm doing now, that you could get away with a, with a sloppy cut, right? As long as um, you have a bit of a plan as to how you're going to go about it. Now, there should be, there's a cut in here, right? Well, actually, we're going to do the cockpit dump because I think it's best sort of value for time. All right. That one's going to have to get popped. Yep. Oh, am I cutting the wrong corner? No, no, no. I'm good. That should be it. My oxygen's low. The hope is that that works, but we'll find out in a minute. I've got to get O2. Fuck. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting better at this. Hey, cool, it did work, so that's exciting. Let's just maybe just not put it into the furnace. Do that. I think the lid's probably going to be worth more on that. Confirm we've got an airlock in there. Uh, you know what? I don't give a shit about the airlock. This I will pick up. This I will rip. Airlock, whatever. That's fine. Like I said, I'm trying to identify triageable parts of the ship to be able to do this as fast as possible. that that got deleted apart from just general aluminium I wonder all right so I doubt that that's gonna get it there hmm bugger That's right, we're working it out. 
The airlock that caused the red bar? Yeah, probably. But regardless, you still look at that and you go, this... As much as offsetting the red bar is a consideration, we got to make sure that we get the yellow bar full also. And that's not insignificant chunk that we've got there. It's okay. Not the end of the world. It's a little bit of a shame that we can't come up with shortcuts. Like I said, I don't. I, I think it's fairly inspired how they've done this pseudo full buffalo way of doing things, and that you don't necessarily have to do the entire hull. At least that's what I was standing by when I was talking about the uh, the three the three sort of milestones and tiers. But just having a look at that, then like, what could I have done different, right? And the answer, as I interpret it, is. I could have done the exact whole ship. Like, I think I think they teased me by giving us the, the illusion of a bit of leeway, right? A little bit of wiggle room. Hey, you only have to salvage 60, 70, 80% of the ship to get max reward. And within that, there's a meta puzzle of choosing the 60% to get the most uh, efficiency out of it, if you follow, right? But just then... What could I have done different in that case? I could have pulled the airlock out. I could have stripped the aluminium insides out as well, if the airlock wasn't the, the main problem there. And I could have not dumped the cockpit down and pulled that apart, okay? Sure, that's obvious. We know the path forward. But what is the end result there? The end result is to get the three milestones, I have to pull the ship apart the exact same way every single time and the exact same time as everybody else sadly it just becomes a bit more um like it's less about coming up with like an innovative way to get the milestone as in well like i said choose the 60 percent of the ship that you want to do that's what we've been playing with there how much can i dump in this hole and get away with it but i feel like maybe the milestone percentages are too tight and too strict because now it's just turning it into, as I said before, a bloody spreadsheet doing your tax, mowing your lawn, cleaning the scunge out of your shower simulator. If you're going to send me in there and I have to hold buffalo the mackerel identically the same time, I guess I can try and optimize my path. You know how I've been cutting it open with diagonal splits? Sure. But that's, I'm surely that's what the entire community is doing. They're all doing the exact same thing and just harvesting the ship the exact same way. And that's boring, right? Imagine if you played Skyrim and everyone only played one specific spellcaster type thing or whatever, right? Because the game incentivized you for whatever reason to do that or it was built in such a way. What a, what a narrow, boring experience. Anyway, I am a little bit miffed because like I said, I was, I was riding high on what felt like the promise of being able to to figure out how much ship you can get away with not harvesting. And what we might do in future episodes is look at exactly how much we can not harvest, right? And it's going to come down to a couple, like a wall and a couple of terminals or something like that. So I, I think the wiggle room's not big enough for um, creative endeavor. Whereas now, like I said, it's just for people that, I don't know, consider that in your heart of hearts, you really want to bloody mow the lawn a lot, you know? You really need to line up your bloody shoes in a row, but maybe you don't have many shoes, maybe you don't have a lawn, so you need to manifest that fantasy slash uh, compulsion in some way. Well, here you go. You can do the whole buffalo, you can cut it apart and harvest it in the one specific way that the game allows and the one specific way that the entire community can not even chooses to do it, has to do it. And, um, like, I think, I, I hope I get my concerns across, basically. And like I said, there's a chunk of people, this will fall on deaf ears, because like I said to them, they enjoy the, I'm going to mow my lawn simulator. I'm going to go from left to right, back and forth, and I'm going to do it the exact same time, every single time, non-stop. And, I, and I'm like, okay, but that's not a game. That is an idiosyncratic leaning. That is someone trying to be neat and tidy, you know, P potentially, I'd be curious to poll those people 
if they don't take this personally because it's never a personal attack it's more an observation of the different compulsions that we fulfill when we play as gamers i would be curious if the people that have this catharsis slash compulsion to do full buffalo all the time exactly the same like what i call boring the exact same method with no variance and no creative sort of input are you the same person that collects achievements and trophies 100 percent i feel like there's a correlation there where people that might be less inclined to play the game on its merit so much as manifest um, a leaning towards completion and order and neat and tidiness. And uh, and like I said, this is just an observation, not a dig, but um, I feel like, yeah, the way that they've structured the current milestones, that they're sort of favoring that audience over the ones that might want to come up with a creative way to solve the puzzle, as it were. Just a thought. Anyway, team, thanks again for joining me. I might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.